And we are live. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Now, June being Pride Month, we here at SWA India and Netflix India have collaborated together to bring to you a special webinar session, Writing with Pride, Crafting Inclusive Stories, an intensive panel discussion aimed at helping us better understand the crafting and development of LGBTQ plus themes and characters in our stories, along with the nuances, the challenges, and of course, the possibilities that lie in. Joining us for today, joining us today for this discussion is a special panel com comprising of not just a writers, but the directors, producers, actors, and an activist perspective as well. So please join me in welcoming our speakers today. Our first speaker today is Shakun Batra, a writer director whom we know for his films Kapoor and Sons and Ek Mein Aur Ek Tu. Incidentally, Kapoor and Sons was one of the few mainstream Hindi films to deal with the is issues of, you know, having a closeted identity with your family and the struggles of coming out to your loved ones. A fact which was widely appreciated by audiences and critics alike. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shakur. It's great to have you on My pleasure. Sure. Next up, we have with us. She is the director for International Original Film India at Netflix, and her focus has been on building a diverse original film catalog for Netflix with titles such as Guilty and the critically acclaimed anthology Lust Stories to a Credit. She has also had an extensive um, experience in different areas, such as film production, TV production, and creative programming, with works such as Pasit Nasa Kwabe, Remix on Star, and Dekhai Kwabon Sony, just to name a few. Welcome, Srishti. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. And of course, we have with us Mr. Onir, an Indian filmmaker, editor, screenwriter, and producer. He was known for his film, My Brother Nikhil, which was one of the first mainstream Hindi films to deal with AIDS and same sex relationships. He won the Indian National Film Awards for Best Film Hindi for the anthology I Am in 2011. And his last release was Kuch Bhegan Alphas, which is currently streaming on Netflix. Thank you so much for being here with us today, sir. It's great to have you on board. Also joining us today is Arjun Mathur, an actor who's made a name for himself in Hindi mainstream and independent cinema. His body of work includes well-known films such as Lag By Chance, My Name is Khan, as well as critically acclaimed independent features such as Bara Ana, I Am, and of course, the popular Amazon original series, Made in Heaven. The show itself received worldwide um, audience and critical acclaim, and Arjun especially for his nuanced portrayal of a gay man living in urban India at a time when homosexuality was illegal. Great to have you on board, Arjun. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. And of course, we have with us a familiar face today, Mr. Sridhar Rangayan, film filmmaker, writer, activist, and festival director. His award-winning films, The Pink Mirror, Yours Emotionally, Breaking Free, and Evening Shadows, present hard-hitting social issues, human and warm, and are at the forefront of India's emergent queer cinema movement. He's also the founder festival director of Kashish Mumbai International Queer Film Festival, which also happens to be South Asia's biggest LGBTQIA plus film festival. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Great to have you here. And finally, introducing our moderator for the evening, Anirudh Mahale. A former TEDx speaker, he's the voice behind Guy Sexual, a portal for queer yeah. culture in the DC context. He's also written articles for First Post, GQ, Vice, and Lifestyle Asia India, and is currently working on a comprehensive queer dating guide with HarperCollins. Thank you so much nice. for being with us today. Yeah, yeah we look it's on my pleasure. So on behalf of Screen Letters Association of India, I welcome you all to the uh, panel discussion, and uh, let's dive into it. Anirudh, the floor is yours. Okay, I'm just going to dive right into this because we have one hour. So, um, over the last few decades, we've seen a paradigm shift in terms of queer representation, in terms of inclusion, in terms of more uh, richer narratives where we move beyond this archetype where a queer person usually plays comic relief or like a stereotype, right? Uh, we're currently in 2020 and now is the time to tell even more inclusive stories. I would like to address all the questions to the entire panel whenever I ask them. So the first one is, how do we start? How do we tell better and more diverse and more inclusive stories? And what's the role of entertainment and digital media in telling these stories? Well, I think um, if, if I may begin, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the most important thing is to stay away from like conventional mm -hmm. modes of depiction. You know, I think it's, it's, it's by being more inclusive, it's writing for people and not just label mm -hmm. them. I think the problem is when we start labeling, right? So, yeah. uh, so that's where it becomes a problem. I think if we just write stories for what they are and just try to be inclusive, you know, without, without saying, oh, this is a gay character, this is a lesbian character, because now more and more what I'm seeing is that 
even within um, including uh, the LGBTQ plus uh, st uh, into our storylines, we are labeling even that. So, uh, you know, I, I think we have to stop really, we have to really be, uh, just just be, it's, it's good to be inclusive, you know, but sometimes we are even doing it subconsciously when we're writing a gay character, even though we're not writing a caricature gay character, now, you know, write scenes about being gay or the, or the pressure of the society on being gay. And I think even those things are now becoming stereotypical, right? So I think we have to go beyond even though, even that, and I mean, it's an encouraging step. Don't get me wrong. I think where we are headed is great, but mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. times they're like, "Oh, now's the golden age because Netflix, Amazon, yeah. everyone's in." But it's not the golden age. We are not. Mm -hmm. We are just about beginning. We are not even at the. We are at the. We are at the birth <coughs> of taking our first step into it. So yeah. I think um, it's important to understand these things, and it's important to encourage each other. And as I said, just just. Uh, stop labeling, you know, let's just tell stories, let people come in, contribute, let's just tell great stories and be inclusive. Yeah, I think, I, uh, I, sorry, sorry. No, uh, no, I was just saying that, uh, yeah, it needs to kind of, as he said, just to pick up on that, that uh, it needs to kind of go beyond the conflicts of the character having anything to do with their sexual preference at all, you know, the conflicts mm -hmm. have to be human and the like it doesn't it really doesn't even have to be mentioned what their sexuality is to be honest you know uh, like only when it's seen it's seen but uh, yeah that's what i think like because even the characters right now whether it's about finding love or whether it's about uh, society acceptance or fighting the legal system like these are the primary conflicts that the characters face you know so i think that is something that can still uh, move forward. I think the word is incidental. I feel like they, it has to be incidental that there are stories which have, you know, people uh, uh, from LGBTQ+. It just has to be incidental. It, the story yeah. doesn't have to always go about that conflict, as he said. I mean, I, yeah. I agree that it doesn't have to go around that. But at the same time, I feel that there's also this danger of, you know, trying to blend everything into this homogeneous thing because... Uh, sure. You know, very often this blending is about what a heteronormative world wants the mm. LGBTQI mm. to blend into. Maybe I yeah. don't want to blend into that, right? Yeah. So I feel like recently I was watching this film called Disclosure. It's a mm. uh, film about trans uh, documentary film, which is on Netflix. And it's constantly talking about the queer gauge. I feel just like for a very long time, uh, we spoke about the need of women to be there in the industry because the gaze, the women, feminine gauge is different and the need to empower. Similarly, I feel which should not be hijacked. The queer gauge is different and that needs to be empowered, not silenced into a homogeneous thing that we are all one. No, it's good to be it's there is a beauty in difference. It's not, you know, it's sometimes it's important that uh, because the, you know, you see there, there is a huge difference between the way a queer person looks at reality because we are born accepting you. You know, first yeah. we have learned to accept you and then we have learned to accept yourself. And now we are teaching you to accept us. You know, so there are various, you know, so the way we look at the world is very often different. Our needs are very often different. And sometimes when one sees films, you feel that, you know, there is this whole heteronormative structure and just the actors are replaced. Instead of a girl, there's a guy. And oh my God, we are doing service to the gay community. Now we are telling mm. a gay story. Yeah. Mm. I don't identify. A lot of us don't identify. And I sure. think that is important. Whereas I totally agree to what Shakun and Arjun says that you don't yeah. constantly need to brand people. At the yeah. same time, you know, no one has to tell, I mean, who has ever, you know, told yeah. a straight person that, you know, a, a gay person that you have to accept a straight person, right? Yeah. But we are telling the world that. So there is a huge difference between the way our reality is and the way of heterosexual Absolutely. reality. Sure. Chip in uh, sure. basically to this conversation. I, uh, I mean, I agree and disagree with uh, both the views. Uh, per se, I feel that the uh, community has been so marginalized. Their voices have not been heard. Their stories, real stories have not been told at all. 
So I really feel that we need focus stories on LGBTQ people and specifically telling their angst because we carry a lot of angst. As a gay man, I struggled with my sexuality for almost 27 years before I came out. And I faced, and those scars never heal, you know? And the younger generation is much more fortunate that they have the social media and the world more accepting. But I would say that like every person goes through a different struggle. And LGBTQ person's struggle arc is very different from a, uh, a heterosexual person's struggle arc. So you cannot just say that, okay, let's show a banker who happens to be gay. I would say his point that he is gay has to be underlined and mentioned and that uh, kind of informs the entire story. That's the way I feel. Yeah, I understand that like you don't have to make gay stories only about LGBTQ people. The LGBTQ people live in the mainstream society. They are part of the larger society. So you can have a gay character or a lesbian character within a larger, larger format of a mainstream film, but their character arc has to be underlined the angst they're going through, uh, the difficulties of them being gay uh, or their uh, difficulties being accepted by the society or by parents. I feel it's yeah. important. You cannot whitewash that particular aspect uh, totally. That's what I feel. No? no, yeah, absolutely. I think both both ways. Actually, it's that, uh, that, of course, the stories about the marginalized have to be told and heard. Uh, and there's very few people who are going to be able to tell those stories also. And uh, as far as I think this, the the heterosexual dominated uh, worldview is concerned. I think that's where that's where I'm at least talking about that. From there, people need to come with a little more respect. That if they don't know the reality of these stories, then at least uh, depict what you're trying to depict respectfully. That's all, you know. You know, maybe Basically, one. Oh, sorry, uh, I'm so sorry. sorry. No, no, please go for it. No, 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 no. I was just going to like add to that, but like you know, you can continue. No, I, I'm. I'm it just wasn't to... anything important. Don't worry about it. No, no, I, I, I was just saying that maybe another way of being really inclusive is not just on the screen, right? It's about making sure that there are enough of voices representing. Uh, I think uh, maybe if I can speak a little to what Rakun and Arjun I received were coming from, was about also normalizing it, that every time you see uh, an LGBTQ plus character, it doesn't have to be only about that. It has to, you know, because that's not, it's not a unidimensional approach that is take, should be taken every time. So not only should we have stories, especially about that, it's like when uh, we were kind of making more and more female protagonists come out, everything was about a woman wronged and then taking revenge. And a strong woman had to be a woman who was angry. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so maybe what we should do, and as we get more and more, you know, LGBTQ voices to write and direct and to present in different ways and take different aspects of the filmmaking process, we will get a vision where there is a certain normalization and within that normalization, there is an inequality in any case. And that would show, right? We recently had this yes. uh, movie called Akuni on, um, on Netflix. I hope you guys have checked it out. It's, it's really about a, a different part of India and how things are treated, but it's not just about that because yeah. they, are, they are regular, you know, they are like understandable and somewhere you right. understand that everybody wants the same thing but from a different point of view and, and somewhere as storytellers, we all kind of owe that. And, and, and I'm just going to take another second to say, Shakur, this is the golden age of entertainment because we now have opportunities. Golden age of entertainment, of course, mm -hmm. but I'm saying people are saying it's the golden age of, of, of telling LGBTQ stories, you know, which, which is where I'm thinking we're just beginning. Yes, it's the beginning of maybe going there, you know, but I think yeah. by calling it the golden age of LGBTQ and don't get me wrong, I just feel what we are doing is we are saying, oh, it's already a lot. It's already good. Yeah. 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 Stepping into that no. world where we are even starting to explore these stories, you know, like yeah. Yeah. Akash yeah. is being a 10 year old film festival. Of course, it's, it's a beautiful idea and it's, it's great. I'm so, so glad that, uh, you know, we are 10 years into it, but I think it'll be amazing when it's, if there's more there is you know it, it's just we are 30 years telling these stories because then you have you're talking about a lineage then you're talking about heritage and then it doesn't feel as uh, as on the periphery you know it becomes mainstream so you're, yeah you're right i mean uh, i wasn't talking about entertainment i was just talking about the stories yeah if i can just yeah. chip in like i mean what we see as uh, lgbtq films are very very small we just uh, see one or two films or one or two series which are labeled as lgbtq but every year at Kashish, we get 60 Indian LGBTQ films being made. And none of them get seen because they're short films, independent films, documentaries, 
There's 60 LGBTQ films being made every year in India and nobody gets to see that. So we need to find basically outlets for these films so that it can reach. And these are stories which are, are really about the community and not yeah. necessarily made by people from the community, of course, but basically about the community. And also like, I mean, they have so many nuanced characters. Uh, they talk about relationship, not just angst for being gay, but like, they, I mean, it's gone beyond that, these films. Yeah. That's beautiful. So I think we need to see more of these short films and the documentaries and independent voices. And not just like some media focused on these five films, only five films, which are just mainstream, you know? Yeah. And that is a big problem. And we need to educate the media, the print media and the television media that there are more films. Also, need I to feel see that, them, yeah. uh, also, I feel that very often, you know, who are we addressing? Because, you know, there is, it's not about writers and directors only. It is also the producers d deciding that, okay, this film uh, or series is addressed to a larger audience. So you have to tone down the quote unquote gayness, you know, which you're anyway generally told in life that, you know, <laughs> oh God, this is too gay or whatever, you know. So what is problematic is we are the largest filmmaking industry in the world. And if you really look at the number of films that come out, you know, I'm talking mainstream space is hardly anything to even say we have started. You know, when you think yeah. of Dog's Day Afternoon in 1975 and you think people, you know, today I was just thinking, you know, every time someone who is perceived as straight does anything which is LGBTQI in the realm of cinema, everyone starts going, oh my God, it's so brave and whatever. I mean, no one's ever told me that I'm brave, that I'm attempting to portray a heterosexual character. So, you know, the entire point yeah. of view yeah. is... Exactly. You know. yeah. I actually uh, have, uh, when the next question comes up with that, right? A lot of people also blame whenever LGBT stories come up. A lot of people, a lot of queer people, basically, also blame filmmakers and directors and producers for queer baiting, right? It's like, oh... For, sorry, characters... for what? For what? So queer baiting. Queer baiting yeah. is oh. when you pander to a queer audience with the with the little, little dangling thing where like, oh, we have a queer character in our show, slash yeah. movie, slash digital, <laughs> like yeah. anything, right? Any form of digital media. So why don't you come here? Because we approve of queer rights. Hi. Um, so how do we ensure that doesn't happen, right? Because, um, which is great. I mean, we've already been talking about movies where queer characters, mainstream movies, where queer characters are getting front roles, right? They're not like background, they're not comic relief, they're not, they're not like, they're not fashion designers every <laughs> single time. Um, how do we make sure that stories also become more authentic, where somebody's sexuality, unlike, um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a cis gay man, which means I have it easier than 95%, 99% of the queer spectrum. That doesn't mean that my problems or my struggles or my uh, the the kind of hardships I've had to face in terms of bullying, in terms of acceptance, I'm not even going to get there, right? Because I also come from a lot of privilege. But there is uh, the spectrum is ever expanding. Every day there is a new there is a new gen sexual orientation that like people discover. So how do we make stories diverse? without them looking like they're being made for the sake of being diverse. Okay. Was it a very long question? That no, was a very long question. question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, would, uh, I would just go for it. Basically, I think uh, we need more sensitization among writers, first of all, because they are the starting point of any project per se. Um, mm -hmm. So we need basically, I would say, exposure to the community. What happens with writers is they might have just seen one gay man and they presume that all gay men are just like that, you know, uh, or one transgender person whom they met on the streets and they presume that all transgender persons are the same. They're not. I mean, there's a spectrum of uh, the way people are. And also, like, I mean, if you say that, like, a gay man could be from a, 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 a non-privileged background, we never see them. We always see gay men who are of privileged backgrounds, you know, who are affluent, who are rich. We don't see gay men from the working class community ever. Why is it so? You know, we need to see their representation. Of course, there are gay men who are basically clerks in offices. There are gay men who are uh, uh, working in airports as uh, cabin baggage attendants. But we don't see their stories at all. Those are stories also interesting because they deal with a different segment of an audience. And uh, I think we need to... So I think screenwriters need to meet more LGBTQ people. I don't know how they would do that uh, by meeting the community or, and then basically flesh out 
stories i mean that's what i would uh, start off by say, saying to that yeah. i think that's so, mine but also. but yeah sorry go ahead arjun sorry please continue no i was just saying that uh, sure yeah stories in the first place but the they really need to be backed by producers yeah. they need to be <laughs> given the nod they, they yeah. need to be given they yeah. need to be given the nod by actors they need to be you know audience will start accepting once i i think like a lot has to do with uh, you know uh, the biggest producers really uh, and and actors that need to take a lot more risks i think the audience yeah. will the audience is smart enough to to accept you know they've consumed uh, this all their work for so long that they will they will come to start accepting it you know no also i feel expecting that overnight the audience will all have all the trp will go it's yeah. not it is slowly it's a society that's evolving inclusion is not going to happen overnight so to expect the same kind of response like a mainstream quote unquote mainstream series or film yeah. it's i mean it's bizarre it can't happen yeah. you know it will yeah. it's a wrong expectation so it is like balancing you do 10 of those do one of this because we owe it to society you know i feel mm-hmm. that it 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 cannot be only economics yeah i think that's so well put on it i i completely agree i think there is uh, there is also an understanding that we all all have to do it as a we owe it to society as owner said i think there's a better way of saying also i don't think it's it's on the lgbtq plus a, a society to educate the audience it's for the audience to educate themselves yeah. you know we have to make the effort of educating ourselves and as shridhar said that you know the writers have to uh, be more sensitive they have to be more exposed but it's not it's not the duty of of some ngo to come in or a movie maker yeah. to come in so, educate you i think uh, we all have to hopefully be more aware of of the world we live in and we have to get out of our bubble and genuinely just try and educate ourselves and i think and i think once that starts to happen then uh, just just like in any other field education starts to like kind of make you more aware it, you automatically become more inclusive so yeah i think over time things would happen of course we all have to contribute and we have to do our best but i hope one day audience also starts to like make, take that step you know Yeah. Do you also? Uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Basically, I think the audiences have to go. To, I mean, uh, right now, of course, theaters are closed, and uh, uh, maybe the movie business in theaters would go down generally. But in the past, whenever an LGBTQ film has been released, uh, not sometimes with big actors, but the people are not going to the theaters, paying money and buying ticket and watching it. You know, I mean, only has released his films, and uh, even for me, the LGBTQ community itself is not going and buying tickets and watching it, which is a sad part. You know. so even if you say 10% of the lgbtq community uh, which uh, is uh, but see that that happens to not only lgbtq i films i feel that that's a fate of most uh, you know uh, independent films you know so i i don't think that is where it's because it's lgbtq because what we need in terms of the audience but it's a it's a another like i mean it's a whole different ball game it's the it's also about exhibitors not giving you the correct shows it's also yeah. about media net you not being able to <laughs> how the hell will i get to my audience if i can't put out media net uh, articles so it's a entire system that does not let the voices which That's are become marginalized come out so it's not one factor i mean how do the audience does not know you exist a uh, very small thing very small thing to add that uh, made in heaven for example was uh, it w- at 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 a particular award thing uh, it did not win best show or anything but we were given an award a special award for inclusivity <laughs> and i'm like i mean at whatever it was great great and all but it didn't need that and we should not be doing that i think because there you are just uh, marginalizing it again you know yeah what do you think is the solution or do we need more queer writers to write queer stories uh queer actors in queer characters or you know like what do you think is the individual responsibility of each person then the writer the actor the director the producer and the media platform that is ultimately going to be streaming the the film or the show if i may 
uh, <laughs> go on this. Uh, it's all of the above, Arirat. Hmm. Uh, it, it's yeah. everybody's responsibility to be inclusive. Hmm. At, Net- at Netflix, we try to make sure that all stories are told. And, uh, hmm. well, and that shouldn't be restricted by just the sexuality of the person behind the story, whether it's creative or it's the person on screen or it's the story itself. Similarly, uh, race shouldn't be, gender shouldn't be in the way. So when you talk about inclusion, it's a lot of inclusion. And of course, it depends on the perspective that you're taking it from. There's never enough. But we have to start, like Jakun was saying, and I think that the audience is open to great stories, well told, authentically told. So they did go in droves to watch uh, Kapoor and Sons. After the first three shows, people would have known that the uh, the much-loved um, heartthrob of the nation was playing an LGBTQ character, right? And it was out in all the reviews and stuff like that. So I think this is a great opportunity, especially on streaming services, to be able to tell all sorts of stories and uh, be inclusive about it. But normalizing it is on all of us. Right? Right. You don't need only queer writers to write queer stories. I mean, we, we're working on this. Uh, uh, we're working, uh, we're doing a film uh, based on Cobalt Blue. Oh, and it's been 20 like, years to that yeah. book, right? It's, and uh, Sachin himself is doing it. And it's taken 20 years for that book to kind of actualize. Fantastic but we're like book. super proud that that's coming up. But we also have other films that are coming out in which uh, one of the characters is mm. gay. And like you said, is not like, and in fact, um, she's a lesbian. Mm. And uh, again, within the dynamic of how we represent uh, different uh, aspects of uh, the queer identity, uh, that is again something that's marginalized even further, perhaps, than uh, the gay mm. man. But it's going to take yeah. a, it's going to take a while, and it's going to take a lot of effort. But it's something we have to keep at for it to actually make and a if difference. I, if I may add that you know one of the things that I often after a couple of programs and came up that is scripts that people were like, oh you should you know it's about sexual about a gay character or lesbian character. But the thing is now some of the writers and I wouldn't say everybody, but just because you introduced or been inclusive, they've not paid attention to most of the other things. So it's not that just by being you know, having a protagonist who's, uh, who's, who's representing the LGBTQ plus community, they're getting the rest of the structure or rest of the story, what that needs to be. And, and when you do not react to that, they take it as, as if you're not being accepting of that. And I think that also has to be separated. You know, the craft of storytelling, the art of storytelling, that doesn't get fixed because you your intent is that, oh, I'm going to introduce a gay character or I'm going to introduce a trans character. I think People have to understand that all of these things are important, and especially if you want to do some some service to, to the community, then write a good story around that character. You know, and I feel that's very important. The reason that some some of these movies are not watched is because all the other aspects of the filmmaking have just completely dropped, and you've only paid attention to one thing. That oh, I just need to pay attention to that. that put focus on that one thing, and I think if you want people to watch these films, if you want people to come and appreciate these films, then actually do it well. Do your, yeah. do your job, do it just right. You know, and I think that's very important for all of us as filmmakers yeah. or storytellers. Yeah, but basically also what happens is a lot of the uh, independent LGBTQ films lack the budgets to hire uh, good writers, hire a uh, good technician, hire good actors, you know, uh, and hence fail to make a larger impact, you know. Uh, for me, I mean, uh, the countless films, as I told, which we show at Kashish, independent films, which are worthy to be seen by a larger audience. But they fail because they didn't have the budget to do. I mean, their intent was great. Their storytelling was fantastic. But they didn't have the resources to bring in a, a big marketing budget to push it through Medianet, as Onir said, or basically uh, uh, get great actors, get production. So that's something we need to really work on, as Onir said, like balance the thing. If you're making 10 big feature films, which are non-LGBTQ, maybe just the uh, green light too, uh, which are basically LGBTQ and bring in as much resources to those films as you would do for the other films per se, you know? Yeah. I feel, I feel that, you know, the biggest problem honestly is, you know, of course, like Shishti says, all the elements are equally important because each element contributes to how you represent. But at the end of it, you know, over the last 15 years, the one common factor that I've always faced and I've made all my films uh, independently is a no. 
you know, is a no because of the characters uh, or the storyline having it's too gay or it's not commercial. So that being the only criteria at the same time, wanting to tell this story because it's important for my identity. Uh, I always felt that it's important. I can't tell, stop telling the stories. But there was always, I've been told by really big production houses that owner, we love your craft, but not these kind of stories. You know, so it's, it's, it's really difficult. Like right now, for example, some of like my brother Nikhil, I am on different platforms. People put it out as the best five films, you know, or best seven films for a year. But when I go and talk about a sequel, you know, which I want to do a film called We Are, which is celebrating the Supreme Court verdict, I get a no everywhere. Even a sequel to a really celebrated film. So I feel that there are these walls, invisible walls, because of one's queer identity also, which I always thought doesn't exist. It does exist. You know, because after I got the... Uh, award in 2000 years I, you know that's kind of strange so I feel there are this silent invisible discrimination very strong ones in our industry yeah definitely and also the other fact is like I mean queer people are expected to make only queer stories I'd love to do that but like basically I remember that I went for long back to a production company with a heterosexual romance and they said like oh this is great but like why don't you make it as a gay love story it was around seven years <laughs> So I said, okay, that's great opportunity. Let me just do that. Then I just tweaked the story to a gay love story. And I went back and I said, no, this is really not for family audiences. We cannot do this anymore. So you're beaten up both ways per se. So, I mean, so where do you go? Yeah. Anirudh, you're on mute. Anirudh, you're on mute. You're on mute. Anirudh, you on mute. Hi, can you hear me now? Great. Please, yeah. really. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, um, uh, there was a question on the existing panel that also has a lot of other questions from the, from the audience today. Uh, what do you, how do you think we can actually get accurate representation of the community in, the, in our stories? So, one of our readers, I mean, one of the audience members is asking that there's only, I mean, we we're only talking about gay men or lesbians or at, at best a supporting trans car member, right? Who kind of comes in into the stories, but asexuals, aromantics, gender fluid people, right? I mean, like, what do we do about the entire spectrum right there? Uh, I've always thought that the gay man, the cis gay man is like the straight white man of the queer spectrum. Right? right. So, <laughs> right? I mean, You're I'm right. telling you, as, as a gay cis gay man, I can like vouch for that. But what about everybody else, right? When, do, how do we start telling these stories? Because there are lots of people out there who identify with, with different kinds of gender identities, different kinds of sexual orientations. And, you know, I mean, like not, like their orientation or their identity is not happenstance for, for everybody. It's a lot of us also actually end up wearing it on our sleeves. A lot of them also, it's their primary mode of identity. So how do they relate to stories that they see on, on film or on television? So what, do, what, are, what are your suggestions for things like that? How do we get that? How do we get the clog? How do we get those cogs working? Well, see, it's, it's as only earlier said, it's, it's not a challenge that you can... Have you I lost have. anyone? Or... Oh, we can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Um, well, what I'm saying is that, as owners said, see, it's not going to happen in a short span of time. And, you know, there'll always be somebody who feels not represented. And I think we have to, that's why right in the beginning I said, uh, if, if you start labeling and if you think in terms of binary, it's always going to be a problem. It always will be the otherization. And I think we have to go beyond the otherization. We have to just be more inclusive. We have to do our best to tell stories. Uh, and, you know, and as I said, I, I, I think if, if we just stop considering me and you, uh, in, in, we don't have to always look at the, uh, you know, we don't have to label things. And I think over time, we just have to be more conscious. And I think everything comes from awareness and education. And I think if we just 
are aware, if we educate ourselves, if we unlearn all the things that the society has put in our mind about gender and sex, you know, it, eventually it'll, it'll become gender fluid. You know, we have to go about gender fluidity and how we talk about that. And I think it will take time, but that's where we are headed. You know, I think right now it's about, can we make a story with a gay character? Then it's about, can we make a movie with a lesbian character? Then it's about, can we make a trans character? Then, you know, I think we have to stop thinking like that. We have to just, just yeah. do. We just have to do one step at a time, tell more stories that will encourage more people to tell their stories that will encourage. You know, it's a ripple effect. Every movie will encourage somebody else to tell a story. And then everyone will tell a story that they, they connect with or they have seen or they have felt or they have experienced. So, you know, to, to think that a bunch of filmmakers will rectify all of this, it won't. They can just make, I can only make one film. I don't even know if my next film will have this yeah. thing, you know, but then hopefully that will inspire somebody to tell their story. That, so I think it's, it's all connected. Yeah, and this, you know, it's, it's, it's sorry. awareness. So, sorry. Yeah. And yeah, and I think this responsibility really like, falls on everyone, you know, from the government to society to just individuals to create an atmosphere that uh, makes it easy for people to come out and share their own stories because that's really the fodder where everything is going to come from, you know, or, or it's going to be like straight filmmakers trying to tell stories uh, that they may not know too much about, you know. Yeah, all you know next thing, you know, you, you know how uh, Shrifty was saying, which I always found funny is like the 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 when the when we made a feminist movie with the male gaze, we just gave them a gun and made them angry. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I feel like that's the last thing you want to happen is now you know yeah. like the uh, gay man's all yeah. powerful and is the villain and you know takes down people. Yeah. I think that's enough. <laughs> I think we have to make more nuanced stories and they have to come from. Yeah. And they have, as, as Arjun said, it can't be a responsibility that's given to somebody. You have to mm. uh, allow people to be inspired to tell what they are feeling. And if you just inspire everyone, you know, forget about, for a second, forget about uh, telling, talking about LGBTQ stories. If you can just inspire people to tell the stories they want to tell and give them the freedom, mm. it'll automatically become inclusive. And that's where Netflix, Amazon, and all the OTT platforms come. And Ashley said, it's, it's about being inclusive as a, for, at a much bigger level. Then you uh, are yeah. I agree that like uh, basically the uh, internet, the OTT platforms have really given wings to uh, LGBTQ portrayals per se, uh, not just in India, but across the world. I think that is the way forward if uh, uh, more and more stories can be told through the OTT platform, uh, basically because it reaches a wider audience and like uh, also like I would say there's no censorship. I mean, we are not spoken about censorship at all uh, in this panel which is a big deterrent for a lot of people to make LGBTQ focused films. Because as soon as a, 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 a gay, a film has a gay or lesbian character, immediately it becomes a certificate, you know? So that is a big hindrance for exhibitors and producers to really back the stories. Because in the early, in the, when you have to go to the theaters, obviously like you can't have a A certificate because your uh, uh, satellite rights are gone. I mean, so you need to get a U. And that becomes a big challenge to fight the censor board. Per se. So we need more inclusive sensor board policies per se. That's something really important. I mean, they have not updated their rule book since ever, you know, and their uh, review team, which reviews the films are really pathetic. You know, I mean, I'm saying it because I've dealt with them over the last five years. Uh, for me, it's been a struggle every time to get a, a US certificate for my film. And my latest film, Evening Shadows, does not have any intimacy, no violence. No kissing, no, they don't, the protagonists don't even meet till the end, you know, but they said a certificate because it deals with homosexuality. I had to convince them that it's a film about a woman and a son. So please give it, finally they managed to give it a US certificate, but that's really rare. And that really is a big blockage for us, you know, but OTT platforms do not have that particular blockage and that thereby they can open up much more. Uh, to these stories. So uh, I'll add That's to what uh, uh, Sridhar sorry. has been, uh, I'll just add to what Sridhar just said, I mean, this whole thing about censor board. I remember when I went with my last film and Shakun, it's also connected to what you've been saying. Uh, the censor, the certificate, uh, the board, the first thing they told me after the film is, Isko to hum UA nahi de sakte hai, aap sabko normal dikha diya. So their biggest problem was that it was they were not gay enough. They were just normal. <laughs> See, that's 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 a that's a big problem because uh, you know unless a film should be given an adult certificate, only if it needs an adult certificate, uh, 
if there's intimacy or whatever but otherwise i think like uh these films need ua certificates because the conditioning that happens on a mass level really like children also need to see these films and see like Absolutely. that there's you know their stories and they, the conditioning actually needs to start young you know no and the thing is if you don't get a, a u certificate or a ua your trailer can't be shown in the theater so again there are so many of these you know barriers to reaching to an audience yeah 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 often based on uh, what you just said at the beginning of this at the beginning of this answer a lot of people are also asking right now about how they can write sensitive stories okay. firstly <laughs> sensitive stories that have been uh, that that kind of are that are reach out to a more queer audience and at the second time the second part of the question is directed to you srishti they're asking how do you pitch <laughs> stories like this to netflix this is what the audience First wants to know the question i didn't hear you how can they watch they want to know how do you write sensitive stories right they write, they want to know how do you write characters with a lot of grit with a lot of nuance but at the same time how as a straight person do you write them or do you kind of envision them with doing complete justice to the character right so that the so that the character doesn't become a b plot Sure, I think or the character sexuality doesn't become a B plot. Absolutely, and you know when a uh, little while ago when I when I was talking about making sure the craft of the film is also in place, and I think that's where it comes is when you're writing a character. I think one of the most important things is to think of the the interior landscape of that character. You know, even if you don't put it in the script in the in the dialogues, I think that's the hard work that that a director and an actor both have to do. You know, writer, director, actor. is is the interiority the complexity of the of the person inside what that is and i think if any of you are uh, you know thinking about just writing a film whether it's about a gay character lesbian or you know whatever you're writing spend time of looking at these characters beyond the sexuality beyond uh, uh, how they're defined by the society what are they really feeling and i think what really really hits home is what is the conflict and i know it sounds too simplistic and reductive but if you can truly go and understand the conflict of your character and it, it could be an interior conflict you know i think in 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 kapoor and sons if i may say so uh, here to because this is the only movie i can tell you what i was thinking the conflict is not that i am gay and i can't be the conflict is that uh he, he can't live with the weight of of the parents think, thinking of him as a perfect child you know he 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 just doesn't want mm. that and it yeah. it is not so much about sexuality sexuality is a part yeah. you know so i feel if you if you really hone in on that try to define your characters outside of these boxes and once you do it will all come together <laughs> and the movie will become more relatable it will become it will reach out more because it will connect at audience at an emotional level not at a level of sexuality or gender or or what the society does to uh, to, to to your marginalized community and i think that's what tends to happen most of the time so that just a little bit of a note that you can use uh, and now over to shrishti once we once they finish writing the script how they how do they get to her Yeah, this is my favorite part of every discussion. <laughs> no, we we welcome all scripts, right? I mean, ideally, if you are coming through uh, your agent or through a producer, it just makes it simpler as a process to know where you are. But uh, uh, mail, mailing us like a log line and like a, a story synopsis document is always a good way to start. Just sending us every script. I mean, we did go through a phase where everybody. Uh, you know just pulled out everything that they had ever written for the last 10 15 years that didn't get made and you just like sent it to us without thinking about why you want to do it on the service uh, and here we are here at netflix to tell as many diverse stories as we can and to look at things to as many lenses but our chief focus has always been about uh, member joy and uh, what it is that gets our subscribers the most happiness because if they're happy then they talk about it they watch more they tell their friends to watch and we get our content creators get excited that people are talking about their work and then they bring their best work back to us so it's really quite simple uh having said that i think so sometimes we just try to fulfill as many different types of content that we can and tell as many stories as we can it's obviously not possible to tell 
all the stories that have come to us and sometimes that becomes a deterrent and i don't think anybody ever sends a story that they don't think is the perfect netflix netflix film to us and i don't think anybody writes a story that they don't think is the best story possible but uh, there are many parameters why uh, it may or may not happen in the first get go and sometimes we are wrong too you know nobody really knows what it is and what it's going to be and what the evolution process is so we welcome everything because we get to learn from every film that we do and don't do yeah i just want to add about this basically that i think if you believe in the uh, script i mean the, and the story and develop it the, as shakun said like with the interiority of the characters i think is really key uh, 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 so i think if you develop a good script uh, even if like none of the big producers back it you know none of the actors back it i would still say i mean myself and only and so many others have gone for it you know we have managed to crowd fund our films we managed to knock doors pull in favors all kinds of things and if you believe in the project you will make it happen and if you believe in the project you will be able to pull out distribution too even if i mean uh, my own films initially didn't go anywhere but finally it's on netflix the three of my films are on netflix so you'll find a way for sure you know uh, i think yeah. believe your script develop your script don't just i would say you got an idea today and you want to make a film tomorrow i mean that's a lot yeah. of filmmakers and writers do that okay today i got an idea tomorrow i just want to do this and no just let it uh, lie low reflect on it work on it develop it uh, talk to your friends uh, you, you don't have to uh, hold your script so close to your chest you discuss with your friends develop it you know they'll give you ideas which can make the script better i think that's my uh, suggestion that like only when your script is totally developed pitch to producers and uh, channels like ott channels and then only then I mean, because if your script is not complete if you just written it and just want to go by it immediately it's not going to be working per se i think we're going to go to the last question of the of our set before we reach out to the audience questions uh what do you think the industry is getting right at this moment and how do you and what are the aspects that you think that all of us collectively can work on to make it better for over the next decade or something i can share what what that was the trendy market right is that what you said what the industry is getting right and what we can improve is that the question yes well i think uh, a lot of things we are getting right uh, i mean you, you know like uh, i think it's it's been an encouraging step as shrishti said there is so much uh, coming out there and you know with ott uh, the, you, you, there is also less censorship Uh, most stories are getting made um, and i think people are definitely tr- trying to tell these stories being more sensitive uh, and what how what we can do to improve again as i said let's just be inclusive let's just inspire each other let inspire people to tell the stories also if you really want to tell stories and this is the one thing i keep saying and i know i i know people think it's not connected but hone your craft because if if you just just your intent is not enough If you really want to tell a story, keep keep that close to your heart, but also hone your craft so you can tell that story well, and that's how it will reach more people. It won't reach more people just because you're telling a story that you have you think in your head is is about is a protagonist who's not been showcased before. If you're already taking that responsibility, then hone your craft to take it to that point. You know, so I think we can improve that at a personal level. Uh, I think one of the th- important things that we could do as an industry is empower. more talent you know but uh, having said that uh, you know also t- for talent to re- understand very often you will see everyone complaining about not getting work but they have not done anything like what shakun is saying right now to actually hone your talents to you know actually nurture your talent and be worth that uh, space so people think that overnight you can become you know you go to the gym and do a couple of things you become an actor you just write a story i mean even script writing is a craft direction is a craft you know yes some people have it but it is good to know your craft polish your craft but as an industry we need to be also making you know at any given time you can see any age level 20 male actors female actors in hollywood you know different age you know options are so much we we don't have that here right now and i think with the platforms coming in that is one really great thing happening that a lot of new talent are coming in you know you were watching shows you don't care uh, who is there because you're watching 
re- I mean, talent and you're watching great stories, but we can do much more there. And yeah. Sean, if you, I, sorry. If I can chip in, basically, I would say that like most of the stories right now, what we are celebrating uh, as mainstream uh, LGBTQ focused uh, cinema is all very urban, you know? We are not really looking at what the uh, uh, non-urban audiences are consuming. You know, I mean, for me, that's a huge thing. We need to look at that market. You know, how can we tell uh, non-urban stories or urban stories for a larger audience, which are non-urban? You know, and I would also say let's focus on non-Hindi. I mean, Hindi seems to be the only priority right now. Why can't we talk about regional language cinema, uh, which is could be more LGBTQ focused and appeal to a regional language uh, audiences per se. I mean, that's something none of us are really thinking about creating more stories in regional languages. Uh, so that's a thought for the future. Yeah, I, I think I think what the industry really like, it's in, uh, we're at a place where at least we're reflecting. I think that's the best thing that we're doing right now. It's I don't, I, I don't think it's time to laud us for anything yet. Um, I think we're reflecting a lot, which is very important. And, uh, you know, I think there are a lot of cues for the industry to pick up on because we have our platforms, we have a lot of stories out there. And uh, yeah, I think there's a lot left to improve upon, for sure. Arjun, one of the audience questions is there, like, there's uh, the same question that has been asked by three different people. Uh, they've all wondered, you played a gay man in Made in Heaven and, uh, and they call you previous work. With such nuance, they're they're asking you how did you face any what what were the kind of difficulties slash challenges you faced while while playing the game man there? I'll be Was honest. Uh, no, no, there never has been backlash. Thankfully, uh, and to be very honest with you, I don't. I well, only because I am a straight uh, heterosexual man, and uh, because I had to get intimate with men on screen, I think that was the, just those moments just before shoot, it was just a moment of uh, apprehension, which I have to leap over, you know, but beyond that, uh, there's, there's really nothing. There was nothing different about playing these characters, you know, uh, they were just con- conflicted characters that I had to approach as any other character and the nuance and everything. Um, it didn't come from any place of, okay, how do I make this a nuanced portrayal of a gay man? I didn't at all. I just, everything I've ever done, I only approach with how authentic can I be to the material in front of me. And that's uh, really, I think, the only place that uh, is worth coming from, you know? There's another question which goes on according to what Shakun and Onir were just discussing. They're asking, does do you need to have a, do, do you need to have an LGBTQ character to kind of make your story more diverse? You do know, you think I, that the need to kind of have I, a queer character is important I, I, to tell I, a contemporary I, I, story? I had this great experience watching Bull Bull on Netflix um, uh, two days ago, and it blew me away. I think everyone should watch it because it says so much without saying anything. And I think that's where the power of art lies, is sometimes you can say everything and it's, it's just a whisper. And I, I really feel like that made me rethink just my craft, my ambition, how I approach things. And that's a very interesting question. And I, I, and I think you can do so much. You can speak about inclusivity and awareness and all of that without ever screaming, without ever saying, look, Here's my protagonist and he's gay. And I think that's where things change. And uh, Bulbul's really made me, uh, uh, you know, think a lot. And I absolutely love the film. I think I recommend everyone watches it. And I think Kobal Blue, it's such a phenomenal novel. And I think that's where a company like Netflix comes in. When when these these things start to get made, Bulbul was written in 2012. It never got made. And if it got made for theater, it probably won't get the same kind of audience, you know? So I feel that's where the game's going to change. Yeah. You know, when we start to come and we start to watch them, I think the needle's going to move. It's going to shift and it's going to happen happen very soon. So I'm I'm very excited. And thanks, Trishti, for pick, picking up Cobalt and picking up Bulbul. I think those are fantastic yeah, choices. Game of films that you couldn't pass on. Shakun, I cannot tell you what Sachin has done. He's kind of, the film is still set in the time, but yeah. he's still done a pass on it because the people who really, uh, the fans of the book, so to speak, 
uh, will find yeah. something more than what they've just been given. I, I mean, that book was always on my mind, and I feel like, mm-hmm. yeah, but I'm really looking forward. It's 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 gonna be great. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be great. Okay. Do you think adapting queer literature is an easier way, or telling more original stories that come from like personal narratives gains more like sense? I think it really depends on what the filmmaker wants. I don't think there is, you know, sometimes you have a story that you mm-hmm. want to tell, which is, you know, and sometimes you get inspired by a book which, you know, is great and you want to tell. It really depends that that I mean, very often actually. Uh, uh books are better than w- how you translate it into films so it really depends on inspires you as a filmmaker i don't think there is any uh rules a lot of questions in the chat about like uh, what netflix uh, commissions short films you know uh <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, we, no, which we, is why I kind of like got one of them, all of them two together as one single question. There, yeah. uh, we're we're not currently programming shorts uh, as such, uh, so that's not like of any type or not. We're just not doing shorts at the moment. Uh, but as we find that more and more people kind of want to watch that kind of stuff and things like that, we'll probably rethink. You know, we're always looking out for what it is that would make people happy and. Like engage them and enable our creators to tell the story the way that they want to. There's uh, a final question that is relatively new. Uh, people are also asking that uh, queer characters are always portrayed in a certain way, right? And how do you move beyond that? How do you move beyond beyond that that the kind of the kind of layers to the character? And uh, wait, I lost that question there, but. Okay, there it is. It's not here anymore. This is embarrassing. But um, so, what do you do? <laughs> I don't know what happened. To the it was right there. But how do you how do you kind of um, tell queer stories without? And this is I think this is why it's a very I know it's a very weird word question. How do you not portray queer people as bad people? In a story, <laughs> how do you normalize it? I think that's what. You're how do you? How do you like, <laughs> no, there are bad queer people too. You can't tell if you're bad like queer people. queer people. You have to portray bad queer people. So, you know, we are talking the, about what Christy said yeah. right in the beginning. How do we normalize yeah. it? I think that's what. We're yeah. Talking. Yeah. We did already touch upon it. You know. I yeah. think so, yeah. I mean, we can go again, but you know, the idea is to normalize it and and not yeah. create a thing about it in your head. Is you yeah. take a character and then you go about telling a story like you would tell a story. You know, don't put this baggage on your thing. Of course, you have to do justice, but you have to do justice to that character just the way you have to do justice to any character that you write. Any character. And it's yeah. not about that now you have extra justice to do. Yes, you have to be sensitive. You have to be aware. You have to understand the milieu where that person's coming from. And that's it. You know, I, I really feel stop being so conflicted. Stop being so conflicted yeah. in your head about this and that. Tell a story and tell it from your heart and do it with the, the right set of craft and tools. And uh, you know what, what Arjun said and the question you asked Arjun is that did you get any backlash? In fact, I find it the opposite. <coughs> I, I feel when you do it successfully, there is no backlash. There's only love. There is yeah. only Correct. acceptance and love and, and people from all over. I remember... You know, Fawad is obviously from Pakistan, and you would imagine that this will get him a huge backlash in Pakistan, and and they loved him for doing it. So I genuinely want to encourage everyone who's hearing it and you know is worried about writing it. If you do it right, <coughs> do it without the baggage, do it without the pressure, do it like a, a a genuine storyteller. And if you do it right, it's like if you wrote a character set in 1880, like uh, uh, Bulbul, and you just do justice to that character, that's enough. Just mm. do that. And I think you would see that worlds. Re- I mean, I understand Oni's and uh, Shridhar's frustration with how the system works and all of that, and that's also real. But I also want to give the more hopeful side: is that when it reaches out, with hopefully in time, it really comes back with a with a lot of love. And that's, that's what I want to say. And that's my experience. <coughs> I'm not saying the other experience is not right, but but my experience says go and do it and do it well. Uh, I yeah. feel that uh, one of the things that Shakun said earlier, and I feel that's the you know when you don't look at a gay character like 
this is the beginning and end of the character, yeah. you know, because it, like for me, my life does not just revolve around that one identity, sexual identity. You are multidimensional and immediately the character that you have takes all those shapes. Yeah. And secondly, as a writer or filmmaker, if you're not making your agenda that I have this, 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 this message to give, I think that's when you start taking a mic and screaming, uh, you know, messages. You don't need to do that. Just tell a good story. I think that's what shakun has been telling and I totally agree. Just tell a good story and you empathize with your character. Your character will get the shades of it. Mm. Has. Yeah, I think like, like, oh, I just, uh, I, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so even if you make a, a gay uh, character, uh, a small gay character, we activists will claim that film as a gay film. So don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> so we'll just promote it as a gay film. And like, so, we'll, so that's fine. I think we have space for we have space for one last question before uh, the panel ends. Uh, the last question for the evening is: If in, what are your individual rep uh, recommendations for queer cinema or queer television shows? I think what is by Ang Lee. I think people okay. give a lot of attention to Brokeback, but if you see mm -hmm. Wedding Banquet, he he done such a beautiful, warm, loving, inclusive story so early in in, in early in the nineties. I think it's nineteen ninety one. And that's the movie that actually made me even think of trying to tell uh, a, a, a story uh, about a gay man in, in, when I was making Kapoor and Sons. And the other one, if I could say, is Prayers for Bobby. Prayers yes. for Bobby is another Prayers small Bobby. independent film that most people forget about, but it just really pulls you in, you know? And I think those two movies, uh, the slightly lesser known film, but absolutely gems, you know? Yeah, uh, I posted uh, 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 three posts on Grazia. You can go to Grazia and see three posts uh, of five films each. Uh, my recommendation for Pride watching, and most of these films are uh, you are able to find it online. So just go to grazia.com and find uh, a set of fifteen films to watch. Uh, I would think of this film that uh, called The Weekend. It's a 2011 yeah, British a film. film. And oh. for me, what really, really, you know, I learned while watching the film, and I think it's beautiful, is the importance of the queer gay. You know, where it is, it's just telling a really beautiful love story, but constantly talking, questioning all the symbols that we have grown up with, all the things that, the stories that we have been told as the, you know, only normal reality. And I think that, you know, it was a film I was watching, smiling, crying, it's beautiful, and it celebrates the queer gauge. I'm gonna say Super Deluxe on Netflix at the moment. I love it, I love it. And I think even both the like, So, yeah. Okay, so I guess we are Arjun, done. Arjun, 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 Arjun. I know. I'll be honest. I don't have uh, too much to contribute to this list. I'll go by what everyone else is suggesting. <laughs> uh, you can watch the ones I've been in. I've been in three. I've been in I Am and Made in Hell. Short film. I I have. These uh, are contributions. I have a huge, it's it's not a film, but it's probably the most important thing that I've ever seen in my life, not just about LGBTQ+. Jill Soloway, who made uh, 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 The Transparent, uh, you know, uh, yeah. she has yeah. a talk called The Female Gaze. It's on YouTube. Oh, just no. write Jill Soloway, The Female Gaze. I, I really, really request everyone. It's not just for this. It's genuinely just for your own awareness and understanding of art and how art represents this and the whole idea of it. I think it's, it's the, probably the most important thing you will see and even more important than watching a film. So just, just go and watch that. Okay, so I guess this is it. This was so much fun to kind of post and moderate. Uh, thank you all for being a part of this. Um, I'm guessing none of the audience thank sessions you. are on anymore because I can't see them. But uh, I'm guessing all of us are going to sign off now. I never know how to end these things. Actually, um, before, before so. you sign off, I just want to <laughs> say uh, a huge note of thanks to all of our speakers today. Uh, Shridhar, Shakun, Onir, Arjun, Srishti, and Anirudh. Thank you so much for taking out the time to be oh. here with us. It was a great and lively discussion. And based on our audience interaction, I can tell you that our members loved it. So on behalf of uh, Screenwriters Association of India and our members, I thank you all for coming thank here today. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.